Hey friends, I am starting this episode of Hot News already having recorded it, but never turning on my camera. So enjoy what is, I mean, more or less a normal episode because we're still gonna have the articles, but smiling picture of Brett. Catlin, take this as a screenshot. And that's that's gonna be what's happening when I am talking and an article would normally not be shown. So Brett screwed up, didn't hit record on the camera. Hot news time. Howdy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Hot News. Dig in, grab your heels, and uh, buckle up. I don't know why I went there, but get ready, because we got uh, it's, big stuff has happened, and some bigger things happening right now, like today's video sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by my favorite coffee in the world, Four Sigmatic. In fact, this is the only coffee I drink, and this is my stock right here. This coffee I love. I've had it ever since I moved back to the States. It's actually regular coffee mixed with some culinary mushrooms, which, according to some research, indicates that there might be some cognitive or attention benefits to them. But even if you dismiss that, anecdotal I've had a tremendous time with this coffee. I've actually been able to cut back on my coffee intake thanks to Four Sigmatic, and it's the only coffee I drink. And actually, we ran out of my wife's espresso mix one time, so I actually threw in some Four Sigmatic, and she noticed that she was a lot clearer in her mind, and she actually switched over to using Four Sigmatic completely away from her espresso mix, and I've loved it so much. If you click the link in the video description as well as enter our coupon code UFD Tech, you're gonna save some money off of the Four Sigmatic. I come have this coming in monthly. We have five bags that come in every month, and it's hard enough to kind of keep up with it, especially now that my wife's drinking in the house, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Four Sigmatic's my go-to coffee, so maybe it could be yours. Check it out. And let's go ahead and check out Zen 3 information because there's been a lot of details that have come out, and I've actually just kind of been holding it off to the side because everything's been coming out with the RTX 30 series, and I've got even more that I wanna talk about, but today we're gonna to dedicate it to AMD and what they've got going on because we're waiting on Zen 3, also known as codename Vermeer, which we're expecting to have up to 16 cores and 32 threads. And according to benchmarks that we've seen previously, which I'm not gonna to share today, we can expect anywhere from a five to a 20% difference between what we have now versus the next gen Zen chips that we're expecting. So some of the big things that have come out is that the architectural differences are definitely going to be happening including the fact that there's only going to be one core complex per die, which means that you don't have infinity fabric latency coming in between each set of cores. And you can have a 16 core chip on just two CCXs as opposed to four, which reduces latency communication between the chips, which in gaming performance should increase the amount of gaming performance. We actually likely won't see an increase of L3 cache, but the fact that they don't have to communicate between it and they get to share it per die, and rather than sharing the L3 cache again per core complex should lead to faster gaming results, even without any architectural or design improvements that way. So we're expecting for that to happen, as well as scalable data fabric, which is gonna be happening, as well as an increase in the amount of RAM it can support up to one terabyte of ECC DRAM Zen 3 is expected to support. But the big news is that we likely will get a complete naming rebrand. You think you're getting the 4900X, but no, looks like the 12 core part that we're waiting on will be the 5900X and the eight core that you're looking for is the 5700X. There's also been some indication that they may potentially be a 10 core version of the Zen 3. I've seen the rumors. I'm not quite sure how true that is, but we could see something like the 5800X has 10 cores, the 5700X has eight cores, or it might not come out at all because that would require five cores per die which would be odd intriguing it's not an even number and it bothers me slightly or you could have six and four we'll see how that works out but that's happening as well as amd coming out and saying that vermeer is a tremendously powerful architecture saying that zen 3 that's at the heart of our next generation products is also a tremendously valuable architecture and you know right on the trajectory that we needed to be on so zen 3 even according to amd is supposed to be something that's pretty good and then continuing on the idea that we are likely will see a rebrand of the 5000 series instead of the 4000 series which just to explain the reasoning behind that is because of the naming scheme differential between the APUs and the regular CPU cores. So in this PC right here, I actually have a Ryzen 7 4750G. That is a 4000 series CPU in this little APU build. However, it is based on the Zen 2 architecture and actually the CPU is roughly equivalent to the Ryzen 7 3700X. So despite the fact that it's 1000 advanced in its naming scheme, it's actually 3000 in its performance, which AMD just 
did for some reason when they launched the first APUs. It was based on regular Zen architecture plus Vega graphics. Then the Ryzen 3000 APUs were Zen Plus and not Zen 2. And now the 4000 APUs are Zen 2 and not Zen 3. So they're just gonna skip Ryzen 4000 altogether for the regular CPUs and call them Ryzen 5000 so that when they launch the Zen 3 APUs, those will also be called Ryzen 5000. And why did they not do that in the first place? Why did we not get the Ryzen 1200G and 1400G? I don't understand why they made it so confusing in the first place, but now they apparently are going to be fixing that and we're getting Ryzen 5000. That's the general idea. And just a little bit of confirmation about Big Navi or Bigger Navi, however you want to slice it. It appears that we've got some confirmation coming out about the VRAM specifications in case you think the RTX 3080 is too paltry with its 10 gigabytes. Well, according to new rumors that are coming out, the 6900 XT or Navi 21 is going to get 16 gigabytes and then the 68 or 6700 XT, depending on how AMD wants to name it, which is Navi 22, is going to be on 12 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Both SKU is going to have more than the RTX 3080. What are you doing to us, NVIDIA? You're not giving us that extra two to six gigs. <sighs> but Microsoft is being given the keys to the kingdom of gamers because they announced yesterday that they are acquiring Bethesda's parent company, ZeniMax Media, which means that they not only acquire Bethesda, but they also acquire Arcane Studios, its software, machine games, as well as a bunch of others, which in case you're not familiar with, it is a lot of video games that a lot of people love, such as The Elder Scrolls Fallout, Doom, Prey, Dishonored, the upcoming game called Deathloop, as well as Wolfenstein. So Microsoft now owns all of those, and that's going to be under their banner. This is a $7.5 million all-cash deal. It's subject to regulatory approval, of course, but then just makes Microsoft the owner of a ton of different companies and can ensure that no matter where you are, no matter what's going on in life, if there is a Windows machine, machine or an Xbox near you, it's going to be running Skyrim. Okay. Skyrim forever. Skyrim is life. And if you don't have Skyrim, do you even have anything at all? Probably not. That's what the kids tell me these days. Anyways, in case you're not familiar, uh, ZeniMax is producing two PS5 exclusives, Ghostwire Tokyo, as well as Deathloop. And Phil Spencer came out and said that they are going to be honoring those. Those are going to be PS5 timed exclusives, and you don't have to worry about that. They're not pulling that out. However, they will take other consoles on a case by case basis and that all future games will be available on Xbox PC and Game Pass. So we'll see if we get any further games coming out on PS5 like Elder Scrolls 6 or the announced Starfield that's supposed to be coming out. We'll have to wait and see if that actually ends up being developed. I personally, I think it would make a lot of sense for Xbox to make it free on Game Pass, uh, whether it's Elder Scrolls 6 or Starfield or whatever the next Fallout game is, which since Microsoft has both Obsidian and now Bethesda, we could get Fallout New Vegas 2 as a Microsoft title. That would be phenomenal, right? Anyways, or you could get Bethesda to kind of work with Obsidian on their upcoming, essentially Elder Scrolls game about, and that could be really amazing. Anyways, you make it free on Xbox Game Pass, and it's just 70 or maybe even $80 on PS5. Obviously, you wouldn't want that, but hey, you don't want to have the native console it belongs on where it's free, then you have to pay for it, and we'll just we'll charge you out the nose for it. That would make sense to me, and I'm sure a lot of people would appreciate having the Elder Scrolls on the other consoles and not necessarily being tied to, down to Microsoft for it. But also with the announcement of Microsoft purchasing Bethesda and the like, we also got a look at their new remote play setup, which means that you can actually game stream to the Xbox app on Android, which is not the same as xCloud, which streams it from the cloud. You're actually streaming it off your device, and with the this, this actually means you're going to be able to use the app to set up an Xbox Series X while it's up downloading updates as well as managing your game libraries, which means that you can actually download games that you don't already have to your console so that when you buy it, let's say you get a physical copy, you have the Series X, right? You go to Best Buy or GameStop or whatever. You see, oh, hey, this is the latest Halo. Let me pick this up. Log into your app, start downloading it so that by the time you get home, it's already ready to go. Or you know you just are waiting on the launch day game that you know you're getting a physical collector's edition of you can also have it preloaded for that this is genius sony needs to do this immediately ps5 games that you can pre-download even if you're getting the physical copy it's such a smart consumer move just do it and microsoft announcing that xbox game pass has more than 15 million subscribers and now we're getting all of the bethesda games being added onto it making an even better value which is just insanely insanely good microsoft pulling out all the wins and pre-orders happen to open earlier today but we're filming this before they've gone live but 
Uh, well, actually, I guess I guess I get to that in a second. We got some more Microsoft news. That's not the Series S and Series X. That's my bad. Microsoft detailing that they're going to become a water positive company by the year 2030. They're aiming to be carbon negative by that date, too. They're going to be water positive by focusing on wetland restoration, as well as removing impervious surfaces like asphalt to allow more water to be produced than is consumed by Microsoft. So good on them there. And now we're moving on to RTX 30. I'll get back to the Xbox at some point because I did not organize this properly. NVIDIA published a Q&A regarding the RTX 30 uh, floundering that happened with the pre-orders, uh, specifying that uh, what happened was that they saw four times the unique visitors to their website as their previous launches, 10 times the peak web requests per second, and more than 15 times the outclick to partner pages. So when they're saying unprecedented demand, they literally mean it. There's no way that they could have anticipated that this would have scaled so massively compared to previous setups. However, they're also indicating uh, what's going on with low inventory, saying that they have great supply. This is roughly equivalent to where they've been previously, and that they're working as hard as they can to get out new cards and that they are so implementing more bot protection as well as now gonna have integrated captcha and when asked why they didn't have captcha previously they were just like we had st other stuff on the back end just you know it's okay and they also indicated that they have canceled hundreds of orders manually that apparently were bot orders but they don't say whether or not the cards have gone back live since they canceled them i would imagine that they haven't at this point because i have not seen any stock being replenished and i have like one of those in now in stock monitoring things going on so it doesn't seem like like NVIDIA has had cards come back in stock, but they've just canceled them and maybe we'll see more coming in this week. But talk about unprecedented man. Zotac, whose pre-orders did not go down over on Amazon, indicates that they have received 20,000 orders for their RTX 3080 Trinity alone on Amazon, which is just absolutely insane. And Zotac saying that as much as they want to serve them out in a short time, they cannot do that and they don't know what went wrong with the pre-orders not going down. But you, if you got one of these Zotac Trinities on Amazon, most people who pointed it out to me were like, look, you can buy it on Amazon Germany, get it there. I was just like, well, number one, I don't want the Trinity because it's slower than a Founders Edition because Zotac intentionally doing that so that they can sell up their higher versions that are going to be coming out sometime later but then number two I figured everybody else was buying them and with 20,000 cards yeah everybody else did EVGA however indicating that they are getting thousands more RTX 3080 stocks sometime soon uh, they're saying that they should be available sometime in the next coming weeks however in the tweets that they indicated that it should be this week saying that they are going to have thousands that they're going to be incoming to across many e-tailers and retailers as well as the stock is coming in tomorrow next week or next month uh, EVGA saying that's going to be this week, which kind of indicates that it was the thousands, but maybe it's some stock this week and then more stock later on, which does make sense. And then let's go ahead and talk about the Xbox pre-orders now, which I guess is the good time to talk about it. According to past Brett, Xbox pre-orders, according to GameStop retail employees, is not going to be good for the pre-orders on the Series S or the Series X with them saying that they just want to die. So I just want to put this as a cautionary tale. I know that pre-orders have already went live, so I'm not really mitigating getting anything treat retail employees with respect because they're people too it's really not that hard i'm sorry you can't get your hands on whatever the thing it is that you want to buy but treat them as people treat them as you could be in their position and you wouldn't want somebody harassing you over the fact that they can't buy a 300 unnecessary item okay just just throwing that out there but GameStop only getting two series s's apparently per store and five series x's apparently per store which is not not good at all. That is, that is not very much. So this is being confirmed by multiple sources. Six to 12 Series X's per store, two to four Series S's with other GameStop employees confirming that's not going to be very much for pre-order, which is a big yikes. I'm personally going to be going through the Xbox All Access to just pay that monthly fee of $35 a month for the Series X to not only get the console, but then get access to Game Pass. It makes a lot of sense, at least if I end up actually getting able to do it at all. But let's go ahead and switch gears over to Sony with the PS5 because Spider-Man's PS5 remaster won't have cross-gen saves current, according to Insomniac Games, as well as the fact that they might be looking into doing a PS5 remaster of Spider-Man's PS4 game as a standalone game. So just kind of some bummer news, but then also getting it as a standalone remaster could work as long as they chose cho choose to charge the appropriate price for it. And then lastly, since we're going to talk about uh, Bethesda one more time, 
Todd Howard saying that the Series X and Series S are causing them to have the greatest generational increase in their engine, the largest engine overhaul since Oblivion with all new technologies powering our new, first new IP in 25 years. And they're not going to be using the same engine that went into Fallout 4 or the same engine that went into Skyrim, which I just I freaking hope that this would be huge because when did Skyrim come out? Was it 2011? Yeah, it's been nine years. I'd hope that nine years would bring the largest engine overhaul. You only had five years between Skyrim or between Oblivion and Skyrim. So having nine years plus, we're still waiting. Like it's probably gonna come out in 2022, 2023. It's over a decade. Yeah, of course, even if a new console was launching, I'd hope you overhauled the damn thing. And Stadia overhauling PUBG matchmaking, apparently removing keyboard and mouse matchmaking, which is just hilarious. Number one, they're citing that it's due to low interest, which yeah, of course it would be because not only do you have the issue of being on a controller versus keyboard and mouse in an FPS game, which is gonna yield atrocious results, but then you're also at the added disadvantage of you're playing on Stadia, which introduces more latency than you otherwise would have. This is obviously not going to have been a, a popular hot ticket matchmaking setup. Good job, Stadia. Good job, PUBG, for finally dropping it. Wow. But I can also ask you to check out today's video sponsor. For Sigmatic, my friends, the coffee of choice here at UFD. Use the link in the video description as well as the coupon code UFD Tech to save money on my favorite coffee. I love it so much. I drink it every day. My wife does too. It's 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 great coffee and that's gonna be it hit the like button if you enjoyed it get, get subscribed to, for all the tech related content i'm brett and you've been newsed which is maybe or maybe not scary